John chapter 8, verse number 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Today we're having some conversation about spiritual warfare. It's a pretty important conversation. I'm hearing more and more stories about how it's being manifest in in our lives, and I think we're recognizing it. So uh, let me first start off by welcoming Matt. Matt's a great friend. We've been friends for a long time, but brothers in Christ, what a joy that is. So Matt, thank you for that. When, When I say the word spiritual warfare, what comes to mind for you? Well, just to in short, demons, but it is Satan and his army coming after believers because you will not see them typically bother people who are in the world. And you know what I mean by in the world. Right. So they typically come after the believers, typically. But you see it with the suffering taking place all over the world. I mean, it's, you know, even the Bible tells us that our struggle isn't against flesh and blood. Like even with racism, it's not against flesh and blood. That comes from Satan. Right. That's the spiritual warfare. Right. But it's the operation of demons, you know, in this in the land of the living. Yeah. I have been fascinated by the story in Acts where Peter and James are going to the temple. And as they're walking up, they lock eyes with a guy who's out front begging, looking for money. And Immediately, Peter says, neither gold nor silver have I, but the one thing that I do have in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, stand up, I get, and I give you, right? So stand up, and he heals this guy and takes him into the temple. And it's such a simple, direct, beautiful story of healing. So Matt, you and I were having coffee recently, mm-hmm. and you were telling me a little bit about your ministry with the VA. You spent a number of years at the hospital, Praying with folks, All right. but praying about what and what did you see? What did you witness? What kind of healing was happening? How were you helping these folks out? I, and anything you want to share that falls into that category? Sure. Well, I did a lot of things. I sponsored dinners. I helped families. I raised money for families because you have to remember these are soldiers that come in with no money, and when the breadwinners hurt in a hospital, you know, so, so goes the money. So, but yeah, my thing primarily was to pray healing. But sometimes you you couldn't pray healing because there were demons involved. So I'd have to do deliverance. And at the VA, I probably did it maybe five times. So it wasn't that much, five or six times. Um, But I saw healing in all kinds of ways. Um, Give me a specific story when you went face-to-face with a demon. um, Well, I'll give you one. Um, I had... Played golf this day, so I, my buddies and I, we typically would have a beer after. So we're having a beer, and this one particular guy sat next to me. And he said he was in town because his mom had cancer. He didn't live here anymore. We get in, so I said, well, I'll pray with her if you would. You know, I know I don't even know her, but I'll, if you want me to take her, I'll go pray with her. And he said no, and then he got to talking as we warmed up more and more. This is a complete stranger. He told me that Satan had taken over his life and that he, Satan had destroyed his life. And I said... I finally ended up telling him, I said, well, obviously, we're here so I can pray with you. So he said, no, no, he was, you know, no, no, no. And then eventually he just broke down and put his head on the bar and he said, okay, you can pray with me. And I said, well, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, not to pray in public and make a spectacle. So I said, let's go outside. So um, we go outside and he was nervous. And you see that when when people are demon ridden, they're very nervous about you starting to pray. So I finally said, enough, and I just put my hand on him, and I just put with the other hand. This is in a mall parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I put my hand on him, and I just said, you know, Holy Spirit, come. And as soon as I said that, bam, he went down on the pavement right, and started weeping. right. And I just kept praying, you know, for the Holy Spirit to come. And he was weeping, and he was begging Jesus back into his life. And then after about 10 seconds, or I'm not say 30 seconds, he jumped up and said, look, I'm clean, I'm clean, I'm clean. And, you know, of course, you know, I don't know that the demon's like, because I couldn't see that demon, right? Right. But then I saw a testimony from John Hagee. And when he described this woman that had come to his office and he cast out this demon, it was my story. I mean, everything, the, the words that were said were exactly the same. So at that point, I knew. But now I've seen physical manifestation. Um, I was praying with this one guy. And every time I prayed with him, 
he was in intensive care. He was awake, but in intensive care. And every time I prayed with him, I could tell he'd get a little more agitated. Until one time I went in and I prayed over him. And I mean, it was like what you would see in a movie. I mean, it was the, yeah. I mean, it was violent. So, you know, at that point, I still didn't know if a demon had left, right? Right. Because I couldn't see it. Right. And demons are smart. So they'll do that because the medical staff rushed in and I had to get out. Yeah. So what I did was I texted a bunch of people to right then to pray, and I stood outside his little tent where yeah. there were like little curtains, yeah. and then I prayed in the Spirit, yeah. you know, because the Spirit is all-powerful and would come in. So at that point, I felt help helpless, so I just called on the Holy Spirit. How can you tell when you're facing up with demons? Uh, so you get better at it, you know, and God gives us discernment. Yeah. Um, How about the healing part? Tell me a story where you actually seen or witnessed or been a part of a healing. Um, and the reason I'm asking these questions okay. is because there are a lot of men. I think men, there are a lot of men who are warriors. And there are a lot of men who want to make a difference. Right. And there are a lot of men who are being discouraged right now because of what's happening in the church. And so it's important that guys like you and I speak up and talk about this and empower men. Oh, yeah. Put on Absolutely. the full armor of God and go after the fight. Because we're on the winning side. The reason I read what I did about light and darkness is the darkness cannot prevail in the light. And so if you charge in, that can happen. And that's, again, going back to the story of Peter, that's what's so amazing about that. He saw it and bam, went to it. And that's what you've been doing. Right. So healing, I mean, there's been so many different types and styles. And I think you, what I've seen, in, just in me, I don't know what other people would tell you, but... It kind of comes and goes in seasons. Yeah. It seems like there won't be very much healing for a while, then all of a sudden there's a lot of healing. And then it kind of, so it kind of ebbs and flows like that. Um, some of the healings I saw, well, the very first miracle I saw was this kid, he had come home, he was, you know, combat kid, and uh, he came home, which is a lot of cases, they come home, they've been at war, they come home, they have this freedom, so they drink too much. Right. And then they go out and they wreck their car. This kid wrecked his car. And he was probably there for three months at this point. I was newer back then, so, and I had to work with the nurses. So I went to visit with him several times, but the nurse would say, oh, you don't even need to go in there because he was that far gone. I mean, he was, you know, in the fetal position with yeah. his eyes rolled back. They said three months laid there, just like that. And uh, so one night I got to his room and there were no nurses. So I said, this is my chance. So I went in there and I just talked to him, just like he was awake. And then I said, let's pray. And I went over and took his hand, and I said, Lord Jesus. And as soon as I said, Lord Jesus, he gripped my hand like a vice. And I prayed, and I just prayed healing in his body, and he wouldn't let go. Yeah. And then, so I left. And then the very next time I come back, which is a week later, um, I can see the nurse. The room was L-shaped, so the yeah. bed was up here. So when you walk in, you couldn't see so I'm walking in, and I, the nurse is talking to somebody in the room. I said, who are you talking to? And she said, I'm talking to whatever, I can't remember his name now, but she goes, I'm talking to him. And I walked in there, and he's sitting straight up in the bed, like no signs of an injury. And I start asking him all kinds of questions about his family. I'm trying to, I'm like, I can't even believe this, you know. Right. So that was the first miracle I saw. Did he know? Did he recognize you no, or recognize he, your voice? No, he did not. Right. And that's not important. Right. Not at all. Right. I mean, I've got so many, and I'm not a journaler, so I don't know, but like one time I prayed over this kid. Uh, he had been in a, he had hit, hit by a car yeah. on, on base down in Florida. He was going to have surgery next week, so I prayed over that. He said it was his knees, had to have knee surgery. And I prayed over it and I said, you know, Lord, fix this before he goes in. So when it's time for the surgery, you, you know, you dumbfound the medical community and there will be no surgery needed. And I, I prayed very specifically over his knee. So I go back to see him the next week and I said, how's it going? He said, not very good. I said, what do you mean? What's wrong? He said, I, I'm not having a good week. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I went to have my surgery and the doctor said it had been healed and I didn't need surgery anymore. I don't trust my doctors. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, do you not remember last week when we prayed this? And then when he, now the click comes, yeah, okay? Right. He was just ecstatic. So I was just sharing with somebody today. I feel like my job at the, in that ministry, I was like the bookends. 
I pray audibly so they'll know what I'm praying for. Yes. Right? Right. Jesus does his work. The Holy Spirit does his work. And then when he does, I'm the book in to take it back to him and say, this is what Jesus did. Right. There was a guy who came. He had been there. He had been in a coma for two years. And he gets to the VA. I actually, he came in the day I, I was on Wednesday night. He came in that Wednesday. Been in a coma for two years. And I prayed over him. And the next time I went back in the next Monday or next Wednesday, I went back in. He's sitting straight up and, you know, his daughter's reading a book. So again, I just went straight to the daughter. I mean, that was my job at this point. Not even talk to him anymore. I'm talking to the daughter. This is what Jesus does. Right. So it's like, I feel like, you know, pray audibly, take it back to Jesus. Right. So that's kind of what, basically what my role is there. But I've seen, I've seen. So you're in the, you got to be in the spirit. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're hearing something or you know something or whatever else because you're in the spirit. Of course, we can have a long conversation. Oh, we could do, we could do hours on the spirit, the soul, the body. Right. But when you're in the spirit, there are things that you hear or you get dialed into that you wouldn't if you weren't in the spirit. That's right. And so you're you're either in the hospital, but, but you, this isn't just happening in the hospital with you. It's happening outside of the hospital as well. Sure. Well, speaking about being in the spirit, um, this was just last week. I was in a Panera Bread, so I see this guy make eye contact with him. This has happened to me more than once, and I'll explain it later if you want to. But yeah. So I see this guy, and I'm overwhelmed with this. He's a good man. He's a good man, right? And it won't leave. Every time I kind of want to look, I'm looking at him. Is I'm a good man. I'm a good man. Or he's a good man. So when he's leaving, I felt so overwhelmed. I knew it was something. There was a message there. So I, I did this to him, you know, like you know, Panera Bread, right? But yeah. he did. He came to my table. I said, yeah. sir. And I always try to soft pedal these things. So, you know, I said, this might sound crazy, but I feel like I just heard from God. And he wants you to know that you're a good man. Yeah. And he, at first I thought he was going to start crying. Yeah. And it's like the wind got taken out of him. And he said, man, he goes, Based on what's going on in my life, I really needed to hear that today. Yeah. So there's all kinds of being aware in the spirit. It's not just healing. Right. It's just it's being open to a word. That's or exactly to, right. You know, uh, encouragement or. Oh, I mean, I remember sitting in a restaurant one time with a young lady, the waitress. She brings our food to us. And there's something that makes me just turn to her and say, hey, we're getting ready to say the blessing. Is there anything that we can pray for you? And, and I mean, she just fell back like two steps like. I, I I can't believe you just asked me that. And then she said, "Well, you'll think you'll think awful of me." And I, we said, "Well, first of all, we don't even know you, so <laughs> we're not going to think awful of you." But what you know? Anyway, she said, "Well, my boyfriend just got arrested, and he's in jail, and you know, I got to find a place to live." I mean, and she just started sharing what was going on, and we're like, "We're good. We're going to pray for you." And she's, I mean, she was amazed. And she just kind of then walked off. So it's beautiful when it happens because there was nothing in my mind or any plan for that to happen. All of a sudden, it's just the spirit moves and you just turn and say something to somebody like that. Oh, yeah. We were, um, I was in a similar store. I was in a restaurant. And uh, at the end, when she brought me the check, I, she just walked up. I didn't ask permission. I just started praying for her. I just looked her right at her and I just started praying. Right. And she backed up and she looked at me. I, when I was done, she looked at me. She goes, how did you know? I said, what do you mean? She goes, how did you know? I said, well, I'm just, I'm just a servant of Jesus. Yeah. And then she, she walked away and she came back and she goes, no, really? How did you know? So, you know, you just have to be open. And I think what's, what's important, you know, for those listening, that you're obedient to those. You know, that when you feel yes. like God is moving, That's you, right. then you have to act. You have to. Because... Uh, and you don't know, you know. And you have to listen for it. Right. It's not something that's where necessarily it's an audible voice, but you've got to understand. You, that's right. When you're dialed into the spirit, you, you're, you're walking through life in a completely different dimension. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you'll say, well, that person across the room or this person in this family or somebody in the hospital. I mean, anyway. So, and, you know. And, and it's almost like you can't do it, not do it. Right. Right. You talked about spiritual warfare, and I, you know, when we're called to situations like that, that's what's taking place behind the scenes, even though we can't see it. And the importance is that, you know, so somebody, you know, God gives you a word for somebody, and you're like, well, you may want to blow it off. You feel like you're supposed to pray with that person, you blow it off. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. It could be, some, it could be a matter of life and death. 
that person could be contemplating suicide. That's correct. So, you know, it's, it's important. When God chooses you, step forward. Step forward boldly. Yes, boldly. Boldly. Um, I wish it was happening more profusely in the church. I love the story, the stories in the book of Acts when Jesus ascends to heaven, what happened with those disciples and how bold they were and how simple it was. And when they saw a need, they addressed it, or they approached it, they spoke to it, and then they moved on. Right. And there are, there are men that are doing this. We don't hear that much about it, but I think that it's happening more frequently now, or at least we're feeling like that the darkness is prevailing so strongly that we'd better stand up and start speaking up. And so, you know, man, I tip my hat to you for doing that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I will, you know, give encouragement to those listening that, yeah, it's a little nerve wracking at first to, to have the boldness to walk up. And a lot of people, you know, when I first started my ministry at the VA, VA hospital, the first day I walked in there, I'd never prayed out loud with another human being in my life. And then by the time I left, I'd prayed over thousands. Right. So, you know, just don't worry about that part because it's going to happen. You're going to be a little nervous. But step forward, you know, just pray and just ask, you know, look, when I open my mouth, God, you speak for me. Right. And I even prayed that when I walked into the VA hospital the first time. I said, you know, Lord, please don't put me in over my head because I'm not a preacher. I'm not a counselor. I don't know the Bible all that, really all that well. And he never put me in over my head. And he would always speak for me. And, I mean, it was just, it was a Beautiful story. I don't want to say magic because it's not magic because it's real. It's real. It's very real. Yeah. When you're bold and you're willing to step out, there's two things that are going to happen. This person is going to receive something, right? You may not even see it or know what it is. It may, you may never see this person again. That's right. They're going to go off and you don't know what kind of a chain reaction you may have just started. You know, a heavenly chain reaction. Right. And the other thing is what's this going to do for you? I, I tell people this all the time, that you will never know the true peace of Jesus until you start taking him out into the world. Yeah. And what it will do for you and your heart are indescribable. I mean, you can't describe it. No. It, one of the things, you know, Jesus has taught me quite a bit about demons. Yeah. And um, you don't need to be afraid. You need to take charge. And, you know, he does give you spiritual eyes for moments. But so he's taught me how to deal with demons. And your most, what he taught me, your most powerful weapon against the demons is praising the name of Jesus. Period. Yes. Praising the name of Jesus. If they come against you and you immediately praise the name of Jesus, they will back off. Yeah. They do. I mean, I found it. I mean, I know firsthand. I went it's going through in, enormous spiritual warfare against me personally. They were coming after me. Yeah. And this went on and on every night because they, they like to operate at night. They can't be seen. Right. And you're defenseless at night too because if it's awake, you can immediately just say, Gee. but they terrorize you in your dreams. And I was playing scripture in my house. I was anointing the doorways. I was doing it all. It didn't slow them down one bit. Really? So I happened to, I was at the VA one night and this, he was a, one of the VA cops. And a very spiritual brother. Yeah. I just I said, what do you think about this? And he goes, I'll tell you what to do. And he told me exactly what I just said. He goes, when they come against you, and you, if it's at night and you wake up, immediately go to the praising the name of Jesus. He says, it might get a little worse before it gets better, but do it. Yeah. So that night, I had an attack. Three o'clock in the morning, I wake up. Lord Jesus, we honor you now. So I just go into praise, right? Right. It happened one more time about three days later. And I, same thing, I woke up, started praising Jesus. Yeah. And then after that, done. It was gone. Is it happening in your dreams? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I've had it happen in my dreams before. I feel like I'm bound, like I can't move. And, and right. all of a sudden, I'm, I'm stuttering, trying to get Jesus' name out. And, right. and, 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 you know, and all of a sudden, in the name of Jesus, and all of a sudden, as soon as that happens, I just feel in the dream, I'll, all of a sudden, whoosh, I'm lifted out of that situation, and then, bam, I'm awake. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that they prevent you from, they can control your dreams. So they'll prevent you from those kind of things. Right. Being able to cry out to Jesus. Right. But they're, they're able to put, when I had, I had the same recurring nightmare like for a month like every day for a month so then on about the third you know about a month 
Um, I'm just getting ready to go into that dream again. Yeah. And something startled me awake, and I looked up, and there was a demon hovering over my bed. And I looked at it. As soon as I made eye contact with it, it flew out the window. Right. And I talked to another, another guy, another deep Christian, who said he'd seen the exact same thing. As soon as he saw the demon, it flew out the window. So they are real. But so they, you know, so what God taught me in that was that they can control your dreams. He showed me where it was coming from. And it took a while, a couple, you know, I don't know, it was another year, how to deal with it. And he did it through that guy who, you know, when yeah, I described yeah, yeah. And it absolutely, I share that with everybody. Praise the name. It, praise is a weapon. Most people don't think about that. No, they don't. But praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. And, and boldly speaking to them to tell them to get away in the name of Jesus Christ because of the blood of the Lamb. Right. Um, as well. No question about it. Interesting. Golly day. There are more men that are going through this that are speaking up. Yeah. You are really speaking to some folks tonight in a special way because they're either wrestling with something. Now, I got to tell you something else, too. I, and I don't want to give demons too much credit, but they're Satan too right. much. But slick. They're very slick. Slick. Yeah. And will come after you in ways you do not know or see because they're trying to trick you. Right. I mean, the only way they could get, I mean, you go back to add the story of Adam and Eve, the only way that that Satan was able to get through to them was in the Garden of Eden, where they had everything, was to make them think, well, what about the one thing you can't have, right. rather, and rather than them stopping and taking inventory, well, wait a minute, I can have the fruit off these other 999 different trees, you know, Satan be gone, he tricked them, flat tricked them. I, ran, I encountered this guy on the street, this was a guy, you know, he... I knew he had either a drinking or a drug problem. This is on the, low, the street near here. Yeah. And uh, a lot of cops were there. So I just sat and waited. I said, I'm going to wait for the cops to leave. And I'm going to approach him. So I approached this guy, sitting on a corner. He looked like he was homeless. So I walked up to him, and we started talking. And I, so I just said, hey, let me say a prayer. So anyway, I, I go into deliverance about casting. As soon as I start doing that, he started come out of me. So he's, he's taking the conversation away from me. Right, he, come out of me. He starts saying that to himself. Come out of me, come out of me, come out of me. And then I, you know, so we're going. So now I'm going to try to get one step of, ahead of him again. So I said, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Just say exactly what I say. Because I'm trying to expose him, right? Right. So, and I get into the sinner's prayer. And as soon as I start getting, I goes, oh, I've been saved. He, so he, see, that's how, I, mean, I know it's a demon. Yeah. But that's how, they're throwing you off your game. They're, you know, they're very, they're very crafty. Yeah. Like you said, we don't. I don't want to give him more, more credit than this dude because, no, as the scripture no. says, you know, you know, he is that is you is more powerful than one in the world, and that's. I mean, that's. I mean, that's true, infinitely true. Infinitely true. Worth repeating: He who is in right. you is greater than he who is in the world. That's right. Absolutely, no question about it. I've been reading a lot, a lot recently about healing and about. Um, a lot of times when people think of healing, they think of something physical. But there's an awful lot of healing that needs to take place that isn't physical. Now, some of this stuff that they need to be healed for can manifest itself in being physical. But anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, there are, there are a number of them. Um, you, you, know, you, you got an example of some of the anxiety. Talk a little more about that. Well, fear is another one. Yeah, fear. Obviously, right? you know, and Jesus didn't give us a spirit of fear. Right. So, but a spirit of power. So, again, that's the work of demons. That's spiritual warfare. Even though you can't see it, yep. this is demons trying to drag you down. They're trying to push you down the rabbit hole. Right. So you have to, it's like, faith is like a muscle. You have to learn how to exercise it. And the quicker you exercise it, the better. So when you feel depression come on, when you feel anxiety come on, fear, even illness, as I had described earlier, go to praise. Praise the name of Jesus out loud. You have to do it out loud with your mouth. The spoken word. The spoken word. And you say it out loud. Well, the demons can hear that. They can't read your mind. So it has to be verbal for them to hear it. Right. You can think that, and it's not going to have the same effect. Right. So just by praising Jesus, you will turn them away. To give you an example, you can praise Jesus. To tell him. I mean, praising Jesus is telling him how great he is. Yeah. But uh, what I used to do when I was coming under attack and the fear and would try to suck me down the road. I just would just walk around. I was going, God, you are greater than all my problems. You know, Jesus, you are greater than all my problems. That's all I ever said. Right. Just walk around my house doing this. Right. And it would lead just like that. 
that it would come back 30 minutes later, God, you are greater than all my problems. Yep. And you, that prayer we talk about praise being a weapon, it is a weapon. And if you feel these things coming on you, don't wait. Don't let it drag you way down. Go to praise. Right. Go to praise. There are other things that manifest themselves. This could be, it could be a family history. It could be stuff that goes back to the way you were raised when you were younger. And sometimes those things are, you know, deeply ingrained in you. You don't, or you're not aware of the way that, that, that you're being attacked. But right. you need healing from those as well. Generational curses. Yeah. Right. Generational curses. So that demon has yes. followed, moved through your family from one generation to Correct. another. Correct. That's why you'll say, well, my dad, you know, grandfather had drinking problems, drinking problems, drinking problems, whatever it is. Yeah. Anxiety, you know, all the things we've been talking about. Yeah. It's a generational, and those demons are, have latched on. And that's what we talk about, breaking off generational curses. Yeah. We have the power from Proverbs. We have the power to speak life and death. Exactly right. We got to be careful because sometimes it's if we invite it because we speak negatively or we speak, I don't want to say we speak death, but I had somebody not too long ago say, I love you to death, brother. And I said, well, how about you love me to life? <laughs> <laughs> Seems so it's, dumb and so trite, but speak Speak, you know, right. speak, be careful about what you say. That's right. Because they are waiting for an opportunity to pounce on it. Yeah, that's exactly. You'll open up a door. You it, will. You will. In ways you don't even realize. So always, you know, we pray for life, we speak life. Yeah. You know, we speak wholeness. Yeah. But that's very true. Yeah. Well said. Matt, thanks. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Let's keep up this good work. Mm-hmm.